Over the past decade plus of my health and fitness journey, I've made so many mistakes in the pursuit of my ultimate fitness goals. And lots of that came down to me just not understanding kind of the fundamentals of nutrition and fitness and how to do uh, nutrition and fitness in a way that aligned with my goals and was sustainable and healthful and something that was actually constructive in my life. So this is something that I have a lot of experience with and I know that you do as well. So I'd love to kind of hear uh, more about the story that we were talking about earlier in um, in our one-on-one -on -one conversation about how you have kind of gone through these various dieting phases and uh, kind of the lessons that you've learned along the way. Absolutely. And thank you for giving me this platform to, to share life. I'm really glad to be here. Um, so I think I'll just start kind of where I got interested in, um, health and, uh, fitness in general. So, um, I studied exercise science in school, uh, came into college, not really knowing what I wanted to, um, study or what I wanted to do for my career. I was, uh, pretty lost. And so, uh, after my first year, I figured I would uh, kind of go down the physical therapy route. And the, the reason I kind of came to that decision was that I know that I wanted to work kind of personally one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, and my mom was a PT for many years. So I talked to her about that and she said that she made some, you know, really great connections and she, you know, she loves working with people. So she said that, you know, that might be a career path for you to explore. So um, that was kind of the direction that I figured I was heading with things. So I switched into exercise science. I was loving all the classes that I was taking. And um, in between my sophomore and junior year, I found this uh, this book lying around my house, um, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger by Mike Matthews. Um, and we were talking about this uh, the other day, and you said that that was a book that you yeah, that was a hugely well. kind of uh, pivotal book in my fitness journey as well. Yeah, so I, fa I found so you actually weren't the one who bought it. it no, was, it was like your parents or something. My Someone dad else? had it lying around the oh, house. Interesting. Yeah, which is which is really funny. And uh, I was moving up to uh, school in a couple weeks, and so uh, I found the book laying around. And he was like, "Yeah, you should take it." Like I haven't had the the chance to read it yet, and so I thought. Uh, this is probably something that could be relevant to my future career and it's kind of aligned with my major. So uh, I'll give it a read. And uh, I started learning more about uh, nutrition and uh, exercise. And so I was like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to give this thing a try. So uh, I used the book to kind of calculate, you know, how many calories do I think I need? And I was learning about all these you know, calories and macros that were completely foreign concepts to me, essentially. So uh, I used that to create my own meal plan for myself. And I was someone who was overweight for most of my life. And I figured that the thing that would, you know, uh, help me to feel more confident about myself was getting the body that I wanted. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to use this. I'm going to do a fat loss plan and I'm um, going to use this meal plan to, to get me there. So I created this meal plan and uh, I was probably about 168 pounds at the time and had never really done any kind of formal weight training. You know, I'd always expect, you know, been in and out of the gym, do workouts here and there, but don't not really know what I was doing. So this is the first time that I had kind of like a structured plan, a structured approach. And uh, so this was during the summer that I started. And over the course of about three months, I went from probably like 168 pounds to uh, 142 pounds, 143 pounds, so like pretty like 25 pounds in three months is a um, definitely a decent amount of uh, weight loss. And so uh, through that process, I ended up, um, you know, I had a, a, a six pack pretty well defined and uh, all my friends were giving me these compliments and saying like, oh, you look great. Like, you know, you've been working out sort of thing. And so um, that in addition to seeing like the, the number on the scale drop repeatedly almost became like addicting in a way. And uh, uh, I was addicted to seeing, you know, progress, not just in my physique, but also in the gym and um, getting stronger and pushing the numbers up, et cetera. Um, but there were some other things that I was bringing into that that uh, you know, we're not as positive. And, uh, some of those, uh, things like I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll give an example, like intermittent fasting was something that I was doing, uh, before I started my fitness journey. And so once I started that, I wanted to keep that in, um, for whatever reason, I, f I felt like that was something that I had been doing and that I liked doing. So I kept that in. Um, but you know, I was in this pretty steep caloric deficit. Like I think I was eating, maybe like 1600 calories a day or something for the duration of these three months. And so I would go into the gym, uh, 
you know, fasted and uh, having not, you know, been eating a, a ton of food, didn't eat anything beforehand, uh, hyped up on caffeine to get me through my workouts. And um, it was just not a very sustainable approach. So by the time I got down to um, that, uh, that weight, I was feeling, you know, pretty burnt out from the whole thing. Uh, there were a couple kind of stories that, that stick out in my mind. And this one is one that, you know, um, really sticks out is I was sitting out on, uh, my porch in my college town with some friends and, uh, we were just talking and sitting around and some of them knew that I was, you know, doing this, uh, new, I guess, lifestyle change. Like they had seen me like weighing my food and sort of thing. And I swear, like they thought I was like an alien. Like they looked at me so strange because that's just not like a thing college students really do. Like college students eat ramen and don't pay attention to their food because it's not important. So I was doing this uh, thing that was kind of odd and, you know, people didn't really understand. Oh, that's that's so extreme. Why are you doing that? And um, which is odd considering they're giving me these like compliments as well in terms of like how good I look. So it's like, you're complimenting on one hand, but then on the other hand, you're saying like, oh, what you're doing is so extreme or so weird. Um, but, but I mean, they were right in a certain ex uh, extent, like it didn't need to be as extreme as I made it. You know, I was super rigid where I couldn't deviate from my meal plan or like go out to eat because I thought it would ruin all of my results instead of just understanding that, um, you know, if you're you know, pretty consistent, you can uh, occasionally have some of those uh, moments where, you know, you're going out to eat or um, you're you're going uh, and making a meal that is not specifically in your plan, but like, you know, similar calories sort of thing. Like that was just not anything that I had a concept of. And so we were out on this porch and they offered me a piece of candy and I was like, no, I don't really want it. And they're like, oh, why can't you have it? And I was like, I was like, I just don't really want it. Cause I didn't want to say like, oh, it's not my meal plan. I can't have it. Uh, and I just remember they kept like bugging me and like teasing me and poking me for that. And I just felt like ashamed for the rest of the day afterwards and like angry and upset and uh that really just stuck out to me and so by the time i got to um this this lean kind of physique um there were some habits that i had picked up you know like uh occasionally the hunger gets to you and uh and i had some you know episodes i guess you could call them binges where like you know after the time that i was supposed to have stopped eating because i was still intermittent fasting i would you know eat something and then it was like oh i ate this one thing outside of my uh, you know, my window now, you know, everything's off the rails and I'm just eating a bunch of food. Um, and that happened a couple of times and it just kind of started to make me think like maybe what I'm doing is not super sustainable right now. Yeah. That's a little bit like a kind of all or nothing approach to your nutrition. And I have, um, when I first got started in my kind of nutrition journey specifically, I was very, I liked using nutrition to control my life. Like um, at the time when I first really started getting into nutrition, uh, our parents had just divorced and we moved away from all of our friends and we were in a totally new uh, town. Uh, I was in a new school. I just went to high school. So new school, didn't know anyone. And I really uh, viewed nutrition as a, as something that I could control that I had direct impact on. So I started being very specific about very restrictive about what I could consume and could not consume. And I would, uh, uh, I would have like egg whites every single morning. I had it a certain way. And then, um, I would have, uh, other things. I went through various phases and there was this one phase, actually, I guess kind of at the very beginning when I was just, um, kind of hyper-focused on being as thin as possible. And the reason that I kind of, um, that I leaned on or that I used probably in hindsight as, as an excuse was just saying, Hey, I really, uh, the less I weigh, the easier it will be for me to run. And I was in cross country at the time. So I was like, okay, the thinner I am, the faster I'm going to be. And, um, that, uh, turned out to kind of become a, a really negative mindset around nutrition. And I would have, uh, like go lean cereal every single morning with skim milk. And it was like, that is what I had. I couldn't have anything else. And I had like this one specific bowl I used and like, I would, uh, I wasn't really weighing my nutrition at that point, but I just, um, I had the same amount every single day cause I used the same bowl, put in the same amount of cereal. And, uh, when I went to school, I brought the same thing for lunch and, uh, I 
just was really restrictive around that. And, uh, then I came home and I would eat jello. Like I just, uh, I would just like fill up with jello and stuff. So like I, I developed a, from the beginning, kind of a really negative, um, view around nutrition because I viewed it as something that I could control. Like this is within my control and I can, um, I can make my body be the way that I want it to. And that was, um, obviously not really conducive to, uh, what my goals are now in terms of kind of being fit and being healthy. But at the time, that's kind of what I initially gra- uh, kind of gravitated towards with my nutrition. And since then, I've, um, I've just kind of been on a journey of learning. Uh, from that point, I kind of shifted more to like the egg whites and the chicken breast with, um, with rice and broccoli and kind of that style of diet as I started getting more into fitness and thinking more along the lines of bodybuilding and reading uh, the bodybuilding.com forums, which is basically where I got all my information <laughs> when I first got started and uh, reading those articles. And that um, that was kind of my initial uh, uh, kind of path into nutrition. And that was, um, yeah, I think, I think the, the, the bottom line from these first, from your experience and, and kind of what I went through is that, uh, I guess, first of all, you should work to kind of, uh, learn more of like the science-based nutrition approaches from the outset of your journey. But understanding that, uh, that, kind of learning along the way is part of the process and you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to, uh, maybe set things up in a way that's not ideal for your fitness goals or for your schedule or lifestyle, but long term, you're going to figure out the right approach as long as you stick with it. Yeah. And I think you kind of hit on an important point there with like the all or nothing mentality sort of thing is like, uh, nobody is ever going to be 100% adherent or 100% consistent. So it's about doing the best that you can do um, and having some like compassion for yourself. If you know, there are some times where things don't go to plan and you have to adapt and you have to adjust and being able to have a, like a flexible mindset. Um, and it's interesting that you bring up the control part of things as well, because I feel a very similar way. Like, um, I had never really felt like I had control over the way that my body looked or uh, kind of the way that I felt about myself. And this was, you know, once I started to implement these things, I was like, oh, I do do actually have control. I can actually make these changes. And uh, it it did get taken to a point where it was almost, you know, too extreme in that sense. Like I was, I was control trying to have too much control over every single little thing to the point where it didn't allow for, you know, flexibility in my life. And it was actually taking away from opportunities. And yeah, you really don't want to, once you kind of get some sense of that control after feeling like you didn't have control for so long, it's hard to relinquish that in any way. And it's, um, yeah. So I think, um, I think that's how, many eating disorders, uh, can, uh, start developing is when you kind of get, uh, get stuck in that mindset. And it's, um, it's a difficult mindset to get out of. And I didn't have a serious eating disorder, but, um, I definitely had kind of disordered eating and that was really not conducive to my goals. And it's, um, it's even like, the most disordered eating I probably had was that initial phase where I was just like focused on, Hey, I got go lean with skim milk. I got half a sandwich with like some bottled water and a bag of chips and then jello and, and a little bit of whatever my mom would make, uh, every single day, but really just kind of to appease her. And that, um, that, uh, was difficult, but then I, um, kind of transitioned that to looking more, uh, through, uh, controlling my nutrition in what I viewed to be a positive way and saying, yep, I'm going to be super strict and I'm going to hit this protein target. And this is exactly, these are the only foods I'm going to have in my diet. I'm not going to deviate from this plan at all. And 
I would just get uh, really kind of caught up on that. So how did you transition from following a set meal plan and where did you kind of go from there? Yeah, so I think after, you know, this initial three month period, um, it was a time of change for me. So I was going back to school. Uh, I was playing ultimate Frisbee. So uh, I essentially at that time decided that what I wanted to do was not to keep following this meal plan. And I wanted to try experimenting with more flexible approaches. So I'm, I'm glad that I was able to kind of have that broader view and be able to say, okay, this isn't sustainable the way that I'm doing things right now. And so I downloaded a tracking app and I started playing around with different things and like putting meals in there and like had my, uh, nutrition targets. Um, but it wasn't like I had specific set meals that I had to have every single day. So I started to get a little bit more flexible and inclusive in my approach. And at the same time, I decided that the physique that I had at this point Um, as much as I enjoyed the way that I looked in some aspects, like I did like that I had a a six pack for the first time, but I didn't necessarily like, you know, how, um, kind of like scrawny and like stringy I looked, um, at the end of the initial phase. And, you know, I couldn't really tell if I'd put on much muscle at all, or if I just kind of lost body fat and maintained what I had. Um, so I decided that kind of for also my, you know, my athletic performance in, in ultimate Frisbee and all these things that I wanted to. Um, do a a bulk, which is essentially just being in a caloric surplus. And um, this was kind of the first time that I was experimenting with this this sort of thing. And I was, I was definitely uh, a little bit scared. Actually, I'll tell you a funny story. You'll probably get a kick out of this. So I actually messaged Mike Matthews on Instagram and said, Hey, I just like, this is my story. I just did like all of this. I want to enter a surplus. What do you think I should do? And uh, it took him a couple of days, but he got, he actually wrote back to me and said like, okay, this is kind of, you should maybe consider, you know, this might be your maintenance and then adding a certain number of calories to this and going from there. Um, And that actually kind of gave me the reassurance that I needed to, to enter that phase. So um, I'm grateful that he reached back out and um, offered that. So I had that. And once I started playing Frisbee, um, I didn't really like include that in the equation. So it still wasn't that I had like a super great grasp on like, calorie balance in terms of, you know, physical activity being one side of things and, uh, uh, and obviously like your resting metabolic rate, you know, how many calories you're just burning sitting each day. And then like the food side of things on the other. So I was kind of using my old, uh, amounts of activity, um, with nutrition. So I found that I was still actually losing some weight once I started, uh, playing Frisbee because I didn't, you know, take that into account, the extra activity. So then I was slowly increasing my calories. I remember like a hundred each week I would do until I started to get to like maintenance or going above. And I think by like the, a couple weeks into it, I was eating like, I had gone from eating like 1600 calories to eating like 3,500 calories. Uh, and I was maintaining my weight, which was, which is nuts to me. And I started to understand, okay, I'm moving more. So I'm, I'm, I require more calories to be at maintenance. Um, but I didn't, again, I didn't really have, I don't know if I fully grasped this at this time because right around this time was when things started to go into lockdown. Um, so, uh, I moved back home I was supposed to uh, go on a trip to Iceland um, and instead I was basically, you know, um, stuck at home for a matter of months, like a lot of us. And uh, that was actually how I discovered veganism. Coincidentally, it was like I had that time to kind of explore that a little bit more. Um, So that was kind of coinciding. But I I basically kept eating the same 3,500 calories, even though I wasn't I was basically sitting in my house the whole day not doing anything. (laughs) So I went from like, okay, I had put on a couple pounds since I started this uh, this bulk to like, you know, adding like 10 or 15 pounds in a pretty short re- like period of time because I just wasn't moving as much. Um, and so I got basically back up and over my initial starting point when I had started my finish journey. So I was probably like 175 pounds and I added maybe a bit of muscle, but I kind of just looked like I had put on body fat and like a bit of muscle. Um, so then I was like, oh man, this, this bulking thing doesn't work. Like this, like, uh, I wish I hadn't done it, et cetera. So, um, I was still, you know, I was still learning things and I was still trying to figure things out. And, uh, I think kind of going back to the point that you made, like there are going to be phases that you go through these things and, um, you make mistakes or you don't do things optimally. Um, but there are kind of things that you learn. So like through this period, I learned, okay, like I learned about physical activity and how that impacts like calorie 
amounts and like if you're doing less activity then the surplus you need is less and if you if you're doing more then you can eat a little bit more so um that was probably the the main thing that i learned from that process but i was again left in a point where i wasn't um really happy with the way that i looked um yeah. so from that point you went into another fat loss phase and you just uh i guess I guess the point is every single time you go through one of these periods, you are learning more through that process. And that um, it's one thing to learn things from uh, scientific literature, uh, podcast books, uh, reading scientific studies, whatever it is. It's one thing to read knowledge. It's another thing to apply it and actually see how your body responds to that. And that is really where like practicing what you learn is actually where true understanding comes from. Yeah, totally. It, it, that was actually what I was just going to say. Like I, I read the science and I understood it, but I, I had trouble kind of like putting it into practice and like really, uh, you know, taking the time to try it out myself and, you know, see how it applied. Um, and so, yes, essentially right after that, I entered another fat loss phase. And uh, this time I wasn't doing a meal plan. So I was doing kind of the same um, flexible dieting, I guess, macro tracking approach. Um, and I think it was probably lasted about three months or so, another kind of three month period. And by that time I went, I was down to about 150 pounds. So I was like maybe five, five pounds heavier or so than I was at the, the time of my last um, fat loss phase. Um, but I, I was, I just wasn't really seeing that much, uh, change in my physique. Like I was adding a little bit, I was adding some muscle. So I was a little bit, um, bigger, uh, maybe pretty similar levels of leanness. Um, but I basically at that point was really scared to do another, uh, kind of surplus phase because I had done it one time. It didn't really work out for me. And I didn't want to, I was still kind of like identifying and holding on to this lean physique. And uh, there were other things that were going on at this time. Like I started learning about um, volume eating. So basically like finding uh, different like caloric densities of food. For example, like fruit and vegetables tend to be pretty low in terms of caloric density. So um and then learning all these like kind of like about these like weird like diet foods. I'm not sure. I'm sure you've seen them like some of these products that are like like high volume, but filled with like thickeners and like sweeteners and just like these weird like I, I call them like like Frankenstein products kind of. Um, so I was basically everything that I ate had to give me the most fullness and like amount of food that I could get for the least amount of calories. And I think that this was a helpful tool in that it helped me to understand caloric density and that I could, you know, I can actually eat more food and it be less calories. But I think I took it a little bit to the extreme and it was like everything I ate had to be this like massive meal. And I had it in my head that, you know, I, I got so used to these portion sizes that like if I ate like, a, you know, a normal kind of like regular size portion that I wouldn't be full and that I would be super starving and hungry. And the more that I kind of bought into that, the more that some of these kind of behaviors that I experienced on my first fat loss in terms of like um, the binging kind of started to creep back in. And I had it in my head that I had like overcome that or that I had got past that. And that was just like something that had happened in the past. Um, but I realized that it was just because I had my environment completely controlled, like going back to this idea of control, like when I was living in my apartment, by myself or actually with my friend, um, I had con complete control over my food, what I was cooking, what was in the house. But when I went back home, I just remember there's this one weekend where we got takeout and we got a ton of food and there was a bunch of kind of food like leftover after everyone had had like whatever their meal. And I just kept eating it and kept eating it and kept eating it. And uh, to the point where I was just stuffed and felt terrible. And then later that night, like I I like whatever reason I had like a bag of granola and I ate like the entire like massive Costco size bag of granola like crazy like I can eat a crazy amount of food and uh it was just like that the whole weekend like it just spiraled and spiraled and I think what I kind of got out of that was that maybe what I'm maybe I am not the problem it's just I'm trying to maintain something that is unsustainable and it's too lean and my body is sort of saying you know like you need to stop trying to hold on to this lean physique that is, you know, making you kind of miserable in a sense. Like you're, you're just hungry all the time. You're always thinking about food. You feel like you have to eat these massive, massive portions and able to stay full. And so I think that's, um, in addition to not really feeling like I had the amount of muscle that I wanted, um, convinced me to, to try another surplus phase. Yeah. 
I I feel like I've gotten to the point where like I'm now uh, I guess when I first was going through those initial restrictive dieting phases uh, through cross country that was back in high school and it's been I don't know probably um, probably 14 years since then so it's been a while since I've kind of gone through this this journey and I guess I've um, I've done my fair bit of bouncing from like one extreme to another and um, I've now settled kind of in a in a place that feels really comfortable when it comes to my nutrition and training I feel in control yet I also feel like it's really sustainable I feel uh, just really great about where I'm at and I can go out and enjoy uh, eating out with friends I can enjoy going to family dinners I can um, just kind of eat intuitively and and maintain or uh, kind of make slight progress towards my fitness goals I'm at the point where I've pretty much I uh, um, pretty much realized all of my muscular gains as a as a natural uh, lifter so um, so that's why I say kind of like I can make some slow progress, but I think the, I think that's really ultimately the place that everyone wants to be. And I feel very grateful to have gotten to that point, but, um, but yeah, I think, uh, doing some things that, um, that don't work can, uh, be part of the process for most people. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be part of the process, but I think going through those kind of dietary struggles, I think you you learn stuff about about yourself, and you're also kind of learning what works for your body, what doesn't work for your body, and what works for you might not work perfectly for me, and vice versa. So, um, how do you kind of uh, recommend people go through that process in learning about nutrition and what is going to work best for them? Well, I think that if you are able to, you know, find good information and, you know, science backed recommendations and kind of come across this stuff yourself um, and try it out and, you know, apply it to yourself like okay these are the general recommendations let me experiment with these different things and see which work best for me that's definitely something that um, if you feel like you have the tools to do um, I'd say is a valuable learning process Um, and I think if that's something where you don't know where you should be looking or what kind of tools you need um, in order to even experiment like that is where a coach can kind of come in and say okay these are kind of the general principles that we recommend people follow let's let's experiment with these yourself and see how they work and then if they don't we can go back to the drawing board and figure things out so I think some people will be able to go on that journey and that process by themselves and other people will need somebody to kind of guide them and help them oversee that process. Yeah, I think either way, having the guidance from day one is going to make you reach that point faster, uh, whether you can do it on your own or not. Like I did most of it on my own and it took many, many years to kind of get to that point. And I learned a lot through through the process. So I, I um, yeah, I, I wouldn't change anything about it, but it, um, but I think looking to uh, podcasts, uh, looking to books like, uh, bigger, leaner, stronger by Mike Matthews. That was a, a pretty, uh, uh, pivotal book in my fitness journey as well. And really kind of, uh, stemmed, um, really initiated the process of me learning about macronutrients and the importance of focusing on kind of flexible dieting. So I think having those sources of inspiration is really important. So kudos to you for listening to an evidence-based uh, kind of fitness podcast. But this is, um, but yeah, that's a process that you can kind of take on your own or uh, kind of uh, help or ask someone else to kind of help you along along the, that way. I think an important process uh, or important, I should say an important part of the process for me as well was reflecting on what my larger goal was and if the actions that I were 
was taking were congruent with that. Um, and I can get a little bit more specific. Like for me, um, I enjoy training kind of like bodybuilding style training um, in the gym. And I th- think I could see eventually myself someday competing in a natural bodybuilding organization. And so I, you know, I kind of had to remind myself of that. And I thought about where I was at that point and where I wanted to be. And I was like, okay, if I want to get to this point where I'm developing the physique that I want, or, you know, eventually being competitive, if I step on a stage someday, um, I need to be okay with letting go of the place that I was at now, um, which was, you know, having that, uh, that shredded look and putting on, you know, more muscle and and focusing on doing that. And so um, once I kind of made that realization, it made it a lot easier for me to, you know, commit to doing that surplus, but doing it a little bit more, um, uh, I guess I wouldn't even necessarily say intelligent approach, but a more measured approach, um, in terms of, okay, let's keep this slow. Um, let's make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm being inclusive with my food selection. I'm, I'm making it a, a balanced lifestyle. And, uh, even though I, I did it, you know, I still did it I think in a way that was faster than what I wanted. Like I, it ended up being about five months and I think I put on probably about 30 pounds. So I went from like 150 to 180 pounds. So I definitely looked uh, a lot different. You know, I was getting comments from people that are like, oh yeah, you, you put on a bit of weight, that sort of thing, especially from like my family members. Um, but it actually didn't really bother me that much because I was like, you know what? Like I'm keeping, I like to say like, keep the goal, the goal. And uh, I was keeping the kind of, ultimate goal in mind through that process and saying like, okay, I actually learned that I feel better between 15 and 20% body fat than I do between 10 and 15%. And like for yourself, um, you've mentioned before that, you know, like 12 to 15 is where you feel great. And, uh, like I, for myself found something different. And I think that's kind of what we keep coming back to is that it's going to take some experimentation to find where you feel best. And, that it's okay to let yourself go outside of like um, what somebody else has had success with or um, kind of what you've heard is optimal and see, you know, what what is working for me. And after I went through that process um, and I did a, another fat loss phase, uh, my third fat loss phase, uh, I had kind of used some of the things that I had, you know, mistakes I had made in the previous ones, like, okay, going too fast or being too restrictive um, or, uh, you know, focusing on, you know, killing myself in the gym, that sort of thing, like taking some of those mistakes I had made, altering them. And it made the third fat loss that phase that I did so much easier than the other two. Like it was almost effortless. And by the time that I had, um, kind of shed some of that excess body fat, I found out that I had basically put on probably like 10 pounds of muscle in those five months. And I was like, Holy, Holy crap. Like if I actually, you know, keep the goal, the goal and stick to uh, a way of doing things or like I could not have got, I think a better way to put it is I could not have gotten to that point where I made that phase so easy if I hadn't messed up on the pre or like made mistakes on the previous two times. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now with uh, the bulk that I'm doing currently. Like um, I'm not necessarily tracking everything that I eat. In fact, I'm not tracking things. I'm kind of using some of the strategies that I've learned in terms of like, what does a portion size look like for me that helps me to maintain my weight and eating a little bit slightly more than that um, and using some like hunger cues to figure that out, like zero to 10, how hungry am I am uh, or <laughs> how hungry, how hungry am I? And uh, maybe I want to be at like a seven or an eight when I'm, uh, you know, in a surplus and maybe a five when I'm maintaining and like maybe a, uh, a three or a four when I'm, uh, um, in a fat loss phase and kind of using those as uh, cues and getting more in tune with, um, you know, what does it feel like, uh, at certain phases? So I think I couldn't have gotten to any of those approaches that I've been more successful with had I not made those mistakes earlier. And I think the overall message, um, from all of that for me is that, um, the process of doing things gets efficient and uh, easier over time as you practice it more. And uh, if you are able to stick with it and work through those challenges and that adversity, um, the result on the other side is worth it. That also gives you a lot of reassurance in knowing that you can have control over your body. So as you go through these different phases to body transformation, uh, let's use fat loss phases and muscle building phases. And as an example, 
uh, lots of people start their fitness journey with the fat loss phase and they go ahead, they lose some body fats and then they get to like a comfortable level of leanness for them. And then they, they decide, Hey, I'm really getting interested in resistance training. I want to build my strength or whatever it looks like. And they decide that they want to start focusing more on building muscle. Then you go into a muscle building phase. And at first it can be uh, a little daunting. It can kind of mess with you to start putting on some of that body fats as you start uh, working on building muscle. Uh, but I guess just kind of trusting the process. And over time, as you continue going through those cycles, regardless of what your exact goals are, you are building reassurance in your ability to change your body however you want. So Let's say uh, now that you're working on uh, continuing to bulk over time, you you know, even if I get to higher body fat percentages that I'm not comfortable maintaining over the long term, I have the confidence that I'm able to shred that excess body fat off because I have done that before. I've proven it to myself that I can do this. And that is a huge unlock. It takes a lot of stress and anxiety out of the process and that's why that's one of the main reasons I uh, most likely that I feel so great because I know if I if I end up um, having a lot of stress come into my life or I'm like and I miss some workouts or I don't sleep well and I start uh, maybe eating some foods that I don't typically eat that don't align with my goals and let's say that I gain five ten pounds beyond what I'm comfortable having on my frame. I, I know I can easily take that off. Like that's not really a concern. And, uh, I guess just building that reassurance, uh, it, um, it comes through the process of doing, it comes through the process of actually implementing this knowledge in your own life and proving to yourself that you can do this as well. And that is, that provides a lot of freedom in your health and fitness journey. And that's really uh, a huge, uh, a huge benefit of going through the process and actually implementing this on your own. Yeah. And something that you just said right there that stood out to me as well is that, um, I was kind of reminded myself that building muscle is, uh, a long process and it takes time and it's a committed process. And, uh, I kind of, began to understood that once I had, you know, done a successful fat loss phase, okay, I think I can do this again. And, uh, it, it got a little bit easier each time. And, uh, that gave me again, like you said, the reassurance that, okay, let me commit to this muscle building phase. Like muscle building takes a lot longer than fat loss. And, you know, even if I mess it up a little bit and I put on weight a little bit faster than I should, I can always kind of get rid of that and then start the process again and learn even more that time and kind of refine that over time. Yeah. And I think uh, the general process for most people is kind of going from kind of uh, more structure in, uh, in many cases, restriction, going from more structure and sometimes restriction to uh, kind of uh, letting off the, the grip a little bit with your nutrition or your training over time. And that's eventually what creates uh, nutritional freedom, uh, exercise freedom and just a better mindset around health and fitness. And that is, um, I think a, uh, and that structure is also necessary for learning about nutrition, for learning about training. If I don't have lots of structure in the beginning and I'm kind of doing these experiment experiments on myself, then I, there are too many variables. I don't, I'm, I'm not controlling anything, so I'm not actually able to take any information away from that process. And I think that's why structure can be really important. So when you're first getting started, making a, a serious effort to uh, stay consistent with your training and nutrition and doing things in a particular way is, is really important. So having a, uh, maybe building a meal plan for yourself or having a, a coach or dietitian build you a meal plan, um, and then transitioning to, uh, maybe just having, uh, a few meals per day that are set. And then you start kind of, uh, tracking, 
uh, outside of that on your own. And then you can transition more to maybe just tracking kind of from day to day and then uh, tracking um, your nutrition after you have already uh, kind of put it onto a plate or something. And just like uh, as a kind of um, uh, a some guidance uh, uh, kind of constructively based on what you what you decide to do with your nutrition you've got um kind of some feedback after the fact uh and then from there you can really shift towards intuitive eating and i think that's really ultimately uh most people's goal is to get to the point where you are just uh you're able to just kind of intuitively understand what your body needs in terms of nutrition and you're able to still uh, you're able to follow a nutrition plan that you really enjoy that also uh, aligns with your goals. So um, is that uh, kind of typically the process that you generally recommend for people? I think that you sum that up very well. And I would say one of the most important things that you hit on is like there are, there are stepping stones to this process. Like uh, I think both of us would agree that we wouldn't be at the point that we are right now if we didn't make those mistakes and we didn't go through the process of, you know, being more uh, paying closer attention to the, the type of things that we are consuming and tracking it pretty carefully. Um, and then uh, like I think a good analogy is if, you know, if level 100 is uh, intuitive eating or mindful eating in a video game, like you can't just skip right away to level 100. You got to work through the lower levels first in order to get to that understanding. And uh, maybe people start out on different levels. Uh, maybe you come in having some knowledge of like, I already kind of know how to track food. Like what are, what are some of the things that I need to be paying attention to and uh, figuring out, okay, these are kind of my general go-to meals that are going to help me get to my goals, but I can have some flexibility in there. And uh, over time you start to, I would say, um, cultivate a mindset that is more inclusive and uh, keeps your goals in mind, uh, but allows you to, uh, kind of just go about your day without having to dedicate as much mental attention to it, um, which is the ultimate goal for people. Like, I think one of the biggest struggles is like, how am I going to do this like forever? Like when people start first getting into tracking, they're like, you know, how can I like, I can't do this forever. And I would say, yeah, like the goal isn't for you to be doing this forever. It's for you to do it for a period of time to feel like you have a good handle on if I was not putting everything into this tracking calculator, could I basically do this myself? Um, and it takes a lot of time to cultivate that skill. So I would say keep working at it. Um, you are going to make mistakes along the way, but it's worth making those mistakes and eventually, you know, going up those stepping stones and getting to the point where uh, it kind of just becomes a, a habit that doesn't require as much um, mental attention. Yeah, I've often used the metaphor of learning to ride a bike with clients. And I say, yeah, it's like eventually you want to be able to ride a bike and just like enjoy the experience of riding the bike without actually like thinking about what you're doing. Um, I guess driving is very similar too. But uh, you want to enjoy the experience of like going on trails or riding down the road or whatever it is. Like that's what you want to enjoy and you want to feel like you have control over that, uh, over your bike and over that experience. But uh, nobody just jumps onto a bike uh, at the very beginning of their, um, of their journey and is able to just ride a bike. You need to, you first get, uh, get the training wheels on and then you have maybe your parents like holding as you kind of go along down the driveway or whatever it is. And you're slowly, you're transitioning from like a more rigid kind of, uh, structured approach and, uh, with, um, uh, and, and then you're transitioning to a, uh, more freedom. And that's, that's, uh, that's how I've done it with my nutrition. And, um, I think the more guidance you can get along that path, the faster you're going to get to your end goal of nutritional freedom, uh, exercise freedom, and that. Um, and I would highly encourage that uh, that you get uh, some guidance along that path. But uh, but that's really what you have to go through to learn how to ride the bike. That's what you have to go through to learn how to eat intuitively um, in a way that you feel really good about and you feel in control of your nutrition instead of feeling like your nutrition controls you. So do you have any other thoughts on this topic that you want to bring up? No, I, I love that analogy. And I think that that is um, 
the goal for everyone is to get to that point and uh it can take different amounts of time for different people but um the more that you kind of just uh trust that the the process will refine itself over time if you're learning and and experimenting with different things and sometimes some guidance can be helpful on that journey um i think that's that's somewhere that we all want to get eventually so uh i'd say that you've pretty much uh summed it up well cool all right well thanks for your thoughts on this topic and uh kind of bringing this topic up uh, and i've enjoyed our conversations both uh during this podcast and also kind of outside this so thanks so much for your time i hope that you really enjoyed this episode and we look forward to catching you on the next one see ya